Hello, my loves, and welcome back to Bahati Life YouTube channel. Guys, I am beyond excited to talk to you about the new moon that's happening in the sign of Virgo. This new moon is going to be happening September 14th, roughly, actually, exactly, at 9.40 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now, I want to go ahead and just dive right in to this chart, but first I want to tell you exactly what it is that you can expect from this video. Number one, astrological predictions. I'm going to dive into what this new moon has in store for us. I'm going to explain the energies. Number two, I'm going to give you some information and insight on how to work with this new moon, whether you're manifesting in the form of active manifesting, whether you're setting intentions, writing petitions at your altar, etc., etc., or if you're more passive, falling back into your feminine flow and allowing the energies and the blessings to flow to you. So go ahead and grab a snack, sip on some water, whatever it is that you need to do in order to feel real cozy and comfortable while I pour this information into you, towards you, and onto your lap for you to receive and do with it what you will. said this new moon is happening September 14th at 9 40 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. This is one of those times astrologically where we can't necessarily see the new moon because it's going to feel like a whole blank space in the sky. We take this as inspiration in order to create a blank slate for us in our own lives individually. New moons are very potent times for us to be able to wipe the slate clean and be able to manifest or visualize or begin to conceptualize what it is that we see for ourselves now into the near future. Now, what I love the most about Virgo is the attention to detail. Virgo does not miss a beat. Even the smallest detail is picked out and primed and wrapped in perfection or something pretty damn near close to perfection. And this is exactly what the universe wants for you now at the time of the new moon. So before I even lean further into this new moon, you guys already know I love to take a step back and I like to look at the bigger picture. Before this new moon was the full moon in Pisces. Pisces is the opposite of Virgo and Pisces is supremely magical. Now at the time of the full moon, we were asked to be open and receptive to the energies that are around us. This makes us very sensitive, which can feel very overwhelming, but it's also a positive thing and a beneficial thing for us because it allows us to be receptive and engaged in the energies that are currently around us. Do we feel supported in our life? Are we missing out on some magic? Can we invite in some miracles? What would we like to manifest? What is going on? Does things feel clear or do they feel cloudy? The full moon in Pisces was bringing up a lot of this energy that could feel very emotionally triggering, but also emotionally exhaustive for a lot of us, especially this time with all of these planets that have been retrograde, Pluto, Saturn, Neptune, Chiron, Jupiter, Uranus, Ver um, Mercury, who is transiting through Virgo, and at the time, Venus. Now, what does this mean? This means that when we, the energy leading up to where it is that we're at right now has been very, very cloudied and muddled. And the best thing that I wasn't telling my clients and that I was telling you guys on Instagram, on my socials, and even here on YouTube channel, try to lean into your intuitive knowledge. Try not to figure things out from a logical or realistic perspective. If you do that, it's going to feel very overwhelming and bombarding to your senses, especially if you're someone like me who is very intuitive and sensitive to the energies in my environment. Fast forward to the new moon where we sit now at this moment in time. The new moon in Virgo has already 
allowed, well, the energies leading up to the new moon in Virgo has allowed us to sense the environment around us, but also within ourselves. And at the time of Virgo, the new moon in Virgo, we then get to see all of what has led us to right here in this moment, all of what might have been blown out of proportion, all of the conflict and the tension that was brought surrounding the full moon and are brought up because of the full moon in Pisces. It has made us take a step back now and kind of wipe our brow for, for, for a moment and ask ourselves, whoa, that was a lot. And now that I'm here, I'm going to begin to problem solve, pick up the pieces and then co-create with the universe once again. And that's the most beautiful thing about this new moon in particular is that it is an opportunity for us individually to go inward to reflect on everything that has happened up until this point. Now again with retrogrades, which is we're in a season of retrogrades at the time of this new moon, but also leading up into this our new moon, we have had to reassess, reevaluate, readjust, and revisit, reconsider energies, whether that energy be a relationship, whether it be your career, your purpose, your path, or just ways that you're living your life in the day to day. The new moon in Virgo, September 14th, you get to take a step back and say, I actually feel like this could be beneficial for me. And this, I put that in air quotes, could look like something very health related, health conscious, because Virgo does rule that. Something as simple as taking vitamins, making sure that you're implementing going for daily walks, maybe going back to your yoga practice, or the quality of the company that it is that you keep making sure that you look back to the full moon that happened in the sign of Pisces and you remember all of how you felt. Now keep in mind that those energies were very tumultuous. They were very tumultuous, things felt very exaggerated, they felt way bigger and larger than life because the planets at that time and the full moon at that time were making things way more exacerbated. They were making them way more extreme. Now Virgo takes those energies and begins to make them make them make sense. It starts to apply common sense and puts those pieces of the puzzle together. So then you could then say, I'm gonna start this stage and phase in my life in a way that feels fresh and renewing and optimistic for me. And that's gonna be my approach. That's the next thing that it is that I wanna tell you that is the gift that Virgo brings is that it will bring this very practical approach very small baby steps that feel realistic for you to to take every single day that ultimately are leading you to a brighter, healthy, and more balanced future. After Virgo is actually Libra, and Libra rules the idea of balance and moderation, which means that Virgo hasn't perfected that yet technically, in the eyes of the astrological charts. So if there's anything that is out of balance or out of alignment in your life right now, the Virgo new moon is a wonderful time to observe it, see that as a problem that has a potential solution if you are open and receptive to receiving that. The next thing that I wanna tell you that is gonna be a magical gift of this Virgo new moon is the blessing of a new beginning, a new chapter, something that feels fresh and in your face forward that you can put your hands on tangible and feel the benefit of this in your every day. Now, the reason why I'm saying that is because there are more planets now falling in earth signs and earth signs are that which we can put our hands on. As a perfectionist astrologer myself who has spent almost the majority of her life studying astrology, I would not feel comfortable if I promised everyone that it would be an easy peasy lemon squeezy fresh start or exactly where this fresh start is going to fall within your life. Why? Because number one, we've got some retrogrades going on here, some very important retrogrades, Jupiter, Uranus retrograde, Mercury retrograde, Saturn retrograde, Pluto retrograde, Chiron retrograde, but also every single one of your charts is so individual and unique. There's no chart that is exactly the same, including twins. It is very important for me to remind you that although these 
predictions that as I'm sharing with you are very specific therefore they're specific for a general audience and the only way to see exactly how this new moon is going to light up your chart and your life is by getting your chart pulled and a chart reading I do have appointments available I'm listing them down below but I also want to give you guys that disclaimer that it's very wonderful to look at the general, but in order to really narrow it in, you would want a professional astrologer just to look at your chart and provide guidance and insight for you with that. So with the new moon, it's very important too that I remind you about how feminine energy, dark energy, or dark, the shadow self, that shadow self within every single one of us is also being supported here. Full moons are very feminine in nature too, but they they can cause us to move into action. Why? Because full moons bring so much up to the surface and we feel almost obligated to act or react depending on the situation. New moons tend to be a little bit more softer, kinder, nurturing, and inward seeking. So this would also be a wonderful time for you to incorporate in your day-to-day -day routine, energy that Virgo brings, things that feel very restorative and receptive and pleasant and beautiful and nourishing for you. I want to take a quick break, a quick pause, and I want to ask you quickly, because I feel this so called in my spirit, what is the one thing so far that hasn't manifest in your life? What is the one thing so far that you wish could happen, that you wish could see bubble up and brew and grow? What is that? What would that look like? What would it feel like? get very down and dirty with the details and the specifics. I feel that way because I've, I'm really getting a strong sense as I'm looking at the charts, but also right now in this moment, that the more that you revisit this idea, the more that you revisit the details of this idea, this thing that is that you wanna manifest, that the easier this will be be to actually come into motion and as i'm looking at this now i'm actually seeing why i feel spirit is leading me to say this to you now because i'm just now realizing this wonderful trine that is actually happening bef between the earth signs or the signs that are falling in earth signs pluto falling in the sign of capricorn jupiter falling in the sign of taurus uranus falling in the sign of taurus and the virgo new moon itself sun moon and mercury combined when there's a trine that happens within astrological charts what we astrologers can see is that something is being created here there is a portal for a new birth and that new birth feels very easy and effortless so i'm really really feeling called even though a lot of these planets are retrograde the fact that they're retrograde is a revisit from something that you were thinking of in the past or something that you set intentions for in the past it doesn't matter if it's six months ago or six years ago or longer than that there's something about a, an, a manifestation that you have discarded that you forgot about that you lost hope over and i believe that this is going to be the new moon that actually sets that into place and that is a very exciting thought and feeling especially when it comes to purpose and path or things that you yourself want to nurture and grow for your own well-being, for your own life. That feels really, really good. I do also want to say too, as I'm looking at the chart and I'm flip-flopping back between the Pisces full moon chart and the Virgo new moon, I really feel like try not, this is also something that I feel really strongly called in my spirit. And if you guys know how, how my process when I'm studying astrology charts it's the math the science of the astrological transits that it is that I'm reading but as an intuitive I've been an intuitive longer than I have been an astrologer that's something that I was since I was like a youngin as an intuitive I can't help but to skim over <clears throat> how tumultuous the energies have been and Virgo energy itself can be very hypercritical of itself or others in the pursuit of doing what needs to be done and sometimes you can get stuck on the smaller details 
whether that be trying to help yourself or trying to help other people. And as I'm saying that out loud, I can totally relate to that in my own life. So at the time of the new moon, I would like to encourage you to be very easy and kind and nice to yourself, especially now. There has been a lot going on in the spiritual realms and the cosmic skies that is very chaotic and very tumultuous and is very abrasive all by itself. I would like to encourage you to not be another person who's contributing that energy here on earth. Try to be very kind to yourself first and foremost. The more that you are practicing good balance and good spiritual, mental, emotional, and physical hygiene in your day to day, the easier it's going to be for you to express kindness to others as well. And that can also be a major part of your purpose. Now, I keep bringing up purpose, and this is the last thing I think I'll say. I keep bringing up purpose because this has actually been one of the main questions that I've been receiving as I've been working with my readings with my clients lately is the idea of purpose or gaining some type of clarity and things that have already happened in the past and how that lingers here now. So at the time of the new moon, this is not me telling you to wipe the past clean and have that clean slate because everyone's story is going to be different and individual and there's, I'm sure, a lot of loose ends that might be left untied. Do your best to try to clean up and create order with those things of the past. Easier said than done, I'm totally aware of that. But maybe that's something that you can set intention and that you can begin to manifest for yourself is that if there is anything that is left unclosed or there's no closure there there's there's a, some loose ends there some parts of you that are struggling to move past this or it feels like it's holding you back let's set the intention that you're able to let go of the outcome and that you can find the growth within that and that's just another specific message that, is that i want to share with each of you guys individually and of course again if you need any additional help with moving forward i'm very very good at that and of course you can always book me for a reading last thing i want to tell you guys with the new moon in virgo is that this is also a wonderful opportunity to get your space clear and clean this is not just your physical space although that is important too but your heart space your mind space your physical body making sure that as much as you can that you're cleansing your energy you're cleansing your aura that there isn't any type of emotional baggage or energetic baggage that it is that you are carrying and i want to say that i probably i want to be kind and say 89 percent of the environment here lately is carrying some type of energies but I think it's higher just by looking at the charts with retrogrades and the intensity of the charts. It's like a cobweb lately. So it's hard not to pick up and get some dust, some energetic dust on you. So the Virgo new moon is a wonderful time to begin to dust that energy off, set intention for it, but also something as simple as an oil or a spray or a mist. Oh, I just happen to have one here. I promise you that wasn't staged. Um, but something as simple as an oil or a mist or burning a candle with specific herbs will help to uplift that energy of your space, all of your different spaces. Same thing to do with your crystals. I just saw this crystal here, and I definitely encourage you to do the same thing for your crystals, especially if you're someone who wears crystals often for protection or manifestation. So my loves, I feel like that pretty much summed up this Virgo new moon. Please let me know if you are going to be leaning into the masculine side of this new moon and be co-creating and manifesting and setting intention. That will be me. Or if you will be leaning into the feminine side of this new moon, the feminine new moon magic side where you're going to be restorative, receptive, falling back and allowing yourself to receive all of the blessings, the cosmic blessings that this new moon has to give, or if you're going to be a combination of the both, which is absolutely going to be me. I know personally, I'm going to be setting some intentions for myself. It's just time 
And I think most of you guys know, or if you don't know, I'm a triple Virgo, Virgo moon, Virgo sun, Virgo Mars. Mercury retrograde for me also has been definitely quite a ride. And as you guys know, I've actually scaled back a little bit as far as uh, all the things that is that I'm doing. That's just because that's the season that I'm in in my life right now. And I'm just so open and excited for this, this because it just feels like it's time. So, and I just thank you guys. Thank you guys again for being a part of the journey and just vibing with me still to this day. So please, 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 please give this video a thumbs up. It definitely actually means the world to me, especially now lately, because it shows me that you appreciate the time that we have together. And it just makes me feel like there's people there, like the views can be there. But if I can see that there is interaction, it makes a difference, not only to how I feel as I look at my YouTube channel, my algorithm, but also how the algorithm appreciates my my content that is that I create, especially in a world where there's so much voices, there's so many voices. So it's really kind for you to give this video a thumbs up or even leave it down, leave a comment down below, it's up to you. But thank you guys so much for being here. I invite you to subscribe to this YouTube channel because there's plenty more videos where this came from. And of course, I will see you guys in my next one. Happy new moon. Thank you.